Hey everybody, it's Mauricio Raul here, founder and CEO of Premier Law Group, your premier syndication attorneys. And today we're gonna talk about how do you get paid to raise money for others? How do you get paid to raise money for others? Well, the answer is quite simply, you cannot. Wait a minute, Marisa, I'm sure you're thinking, hey, you've been telling us all along that there's always a way that instead of asking that question, you've got to ask a better question, which is how, how do we get paid to raise money for other people, which is absolutely correct. I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, let's talk about why you can't get paid and some of the ways people are doing it right now that is completely illegal and in violation of the securities laws. First of all, the only way you can really get paid in order to raise money for others is if you are a SEC licensed broker dealer. Now that's an extremely difficult, I wanna say difficult, but it's a very time consuming and expensive process to go through. And unless you're planning on doing this for a living, uh, probably not going to be registering as an SEC broker dealer. Um, so we've gotta come up with other ways. But what people are doing right now, which blows me away, is that number one, they're just doing it, right? People are actually receiving compensation for um, raising money and they're acting without a license. And just like you can't practice medicine without a license and you can't practice law without a license, you cannot practice being a broker dealer without having that license. And the issue is for the person receiving the compensation, uh, that person, number one, is obviously gonna be in violation of the law. And number two, they're probably going to have a hard time collecting any of those monies because if it's challenged, again, they're practicing without a license, so they're gonna get their money, um, they're gonna have a hard time collecting their money. On the issuer side or on the syndication side, which is what I'm more com concerned about, you've got two issues. Number one, you're probably, not, you're probably not disclosing the fact that you're paying these referral fees to these people because obviously it's, in, it's illegal and therefore you, you're not disclosing it. Uh, and second of all, you're probably going to be faced with rescission rights, meaning if that turns out to be correct, that you're paying somebody who doesn't have a license, then you are going to be required to return the investor's money along with whatever interest you have. So it's not a situation you wanna be in, so avoid that at all costs. Now, what I've been seeing a lot lately is tr people trying to get around this rule and trying to set up a marketing agreement or a consulting agreement or some kind of side agreement where they say, well, uh, I'm actually getting paid for doing something different. Now, you can call it a marketing agreement, you can call it a consulting agreement, you can call it an independent contractor agreement, doesn't matter what you call it, the SEC is going to look at the actual facts and what's underlying, what's underneath that contract. So it's going to be your burden to prove that if you're claiming a marketing agreement that you are actually doing all of the things that are enumerated in a marketing agreement, assuming you even have a written marketing agreement, but it's gonna be your burden to show that you're doing all of those items and none of those can be related to raising money. Uh, most of the time, people I know don't even bother with a marketing agreement, having a written marketing agreement, but certainly if, it would, if somebody pressed them to prove that they were doing anything, they'd have a hard time doing it because essentially they're trying to get around the rules and they just wanna get compensated. So stay away from the marketing agreement or the consulting agreement because that in essence is getting compensated and acting like a broker dealer, unless you truly are doing it. I mean, if you truly are in the marketing business and you are co getting compensated for marketing services, for you know preparing, maybe you're preparing the business plan, maybe you're running their social media, you're doing a 506C and so you're helping advertising and you're getting compensated for those services, that's fine. But if you're trying to get around it, that's gonna be an issue. Another way people are doing it is they're actually doing what's called a fund of funds. Essentially, they're raising the money into their own syndication, their own LLC, and then turning around and, and investing in somebody, else LLC, somebody else's LLC and getting compensated at their level for doing a, le a legitimate raise. Now, that's one way you could do it, but here's the issue. Even though you're complying with the SEC laws in terms of a Reg D offering, assuming you're doing that correctly, right? You're doing a PPM, you're going through all those all those rules and regulations and you've got an attorney helping you, you're gonna be in compliance on that part. But here's the trick. Usually, let me diagram this, this is kind of an important part. Usually, when you're doing a syndication, you are putting money into an LLC and that LLC is buying a piece of property. And so you're actually investing in real estate. And as we all know, you don't actually need a license to invest in real estate. The challenge becomes that when you do a fund of funds, as you guys know, what happens is, you are putting money into your own LLC, right? And that LLC then turns around and invests in another LLC that owns the property. And that's usually managed by someone else. Well, if you notice, it's a very slight difference, but now what you're doing is instead of investing in property, 
you're investing in shares of another company, right? In this case, it's LLC, so it's membership units in an LLC. But now you are investing in a security and advising your clients, not your clients, and your investors to put money into a security as opposed to put money into real estate. And that triggers the question, do you need to be registered as a registered investment advisor under the Investment Advisory Act? That is a different section of the law, different securities world, separate from the Reg D offerings. And therefore you need to go and speak with somebody who specializes in that area. Now, typically if you are have a hundred million dollars or less um, of assets under management, you are not going to be required to worry about the SEC. You're not at the federal level, but you are at the state level, which causes another issue, which is this all is state by state. So you wanna make sure that you are talking to somebody who specialized in California or specialized in Texas or specialized in Florida to find out whether you need to be registered as a registered investment advisor to pull off this model. Now I've been talking to a couple of attorneys and it turns out there in many states there are exemptions to becoming a registered investment advisor, which is the good news. The bad news is there's a lot of compliance that comes along with that in terms of audited financials and again, depends on the state. So there's some regulatory and compliance uh, things you've got to worry about even though you don't have to do a full-blown registration as a registered investment advisor. So this one comes into sort of that middle ground where yes, it's technically legal or it's legal from an SEC standpoint, and, and your Reg D offering, 506B, 506C, maybe even a Reg A, but now you've got to worry about licensing requirements and whether you need to become a registered investment advisor. So, how do you get compensated properly for raising money? And the answer is, and I'm sure you've heard of it before, is you bring that person in or that person becomes a legitimate co-sponsor of your deal. Now, when I say co-sponsor, I mean they really become a co-sponsor. Again, you cannot compensate anyone for raising money for you. And that compensation includes giving them a share of your GP, whether it's cash, whether it's sh uh, shares in a company, LLC units, that is still considered compensation. So that person needs to be join your team, become a co-GP, and actually do the work similar to what you're doing and not get compensated for the equity raise or the money raise. Think of it this way, if you're ever in a situation where you're sitting across the desk from a regulator, and I know that doesn't happen, it's not the way the audits work, but just think about it. If you're sitting across the table from a regulator and the regulator asks, Mauricio, I see that John is a co-GP and owns 5% or 10% of your company. What did that person do to earn that five or 10%? Because clearly they didn't put any cash in the deal. Your answer cannot be, he helped me raise money. You've got to come up with all the other different ways other than raising money that that person is getting compensated for. That could be helping with your underwriting, helping with your due diligence, talking to the attorneys, hiring the property manager, uh, investor relations, all the things that you typically do as a co-sponsor, you wanna bring them in the team, divvy up the work, everybody does work equally or proportionally that uh, can satisfy that rule and therefore they are getting compensated not for raising the money, but actually for becoming a co-sponsor. So hopefully that's helpful. There's one more way that you can potentially do it, but I really encourage you guys to stay away from it. Uh, but that's a little bit more detailed, so I didn't feel comfortable doing it in a video. I wanted to actually lay it out step by step. So on the uh, link below, there's gonna be an article on how you can get compensated as a finder. And the reason I tell people to stay away from that is it's very difficult to stay within the lanes and I don't trust you guys to act as a finder and it's almost impossible for you to be doing it and not cross over that line and become a broker dealer. So anyway, that's how you get compensated for raising capital. Hopefully you found this uh, valuable uh, and looking forward to the next video. Thank you.